Hey guys, Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. It is time to talk 22 Nosler. I recently competed in my very first PRS match using this 22 Nosler rifle. You're gonna to wanna to check out the two-part series I did on that, on the experience and on the gear. Now it's time to go in depth on 22 Nosler. What is 22 Nosler? Why would you want 22 Nosler? What do you need to do to put together an AR-15 in 22 Nosler? How about the ballistics? And how about the reloading? We're gonna cover all that in this video, and then in future videos, we're gonna get hands-on with the reloading gear. We're gonna reload some 22 Nosler ammunition. We're gonna check it out at the range. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So let's get straight into it. What is 22 Nosler? Simply stated, 22 Nosler is 223 Remington turned up to 11. It's a larger cartridge. It uses the same case rim, so it's gonna work with the bolt in your existing AR-15 rifle. It does use a different magazine, but it's got greater case capacity. It's got about 25% more case capacity compared to 223 and 556. What does that mean? It means increased velocities. Sometimes that increased velocity can make the difference between acceptable ballistics at a particular distance and unacceptable ballistics. And that was exactly the case in the match that I competed in. I found that with the 70 grain bullets I was using, 223 was getting a little bit questionable at about 700 yards, which was the maximum distance that we were competing at in this PRS match. 22 Nosler took it up a notch and we were up 1300-ish feet per second above the transonic range, had plenty of headroom and it performed awesome. This picture shows the first shots that I placed on steel. In fact, they were the very first shots at 600 yards. I did a quick 100 yard sight in. I got my G7BC from my RDF 70 grain bullets from Nosler. I dialed it into the shooter app and I was on steel on the first shot. So, I'm a fan of 22 Nosler. Uh, let's take a look at the cartridge and compare 22 Nosler to 223 Remington and 556 NATO. So let's take a look at these cartridge cutaways that I prepared for 5.56 NATO, which has the least case capacity, 223 Remington, which has slightly more case capacity, and 22 Nosler, which has significantly more case capacity. Now between 5.56 NATO and 223 Remington, there's kind of two key differences. On the exterior, they're pretty much the same, but the wall thickness of the brass for 5.56 NATO is thicker and hence it can handle more pressure. 62,000 PSI compared to 55,000 PSI for 223, which coincidentally is also the same for 22 nozzle. It's also 55,000 PSI. You can see down here at the base near the case rim, the thickness difference between the 5.56 and the 223 Remington. 22 Nosler is essentially the same down at the case rim because it's it's manufactured to and designed to work with your AR-15 bolt but it's got a rebated rim so it's got a larger major case diameter and then it's also got the shoulder set back further in comparison in relative comparison to 223 Remington so that you can't accidentally chamber a 223 Remington or 556 NATO round which remember are the same on the exterior in a 22 Nosler chambered firearm. So, what does all this mean? Well, 22 Nosler has about 25% more case capacity. Overall, that's to the top of the case mouth if you're comparing the grains of water compared to, to 223 Remington. So this means more velocity, more energy downrange. So basically the 22 Nosler is a 223 Remington cartridge with a fatter major case diameter and a shoulder that's pushed back slightly for safety purposes. Hopefully that gives you a basic understanding of the cartridge itself. Let's talk about the rifle requirements. So the goal with 22 Nosler was to push the AR-15 to the max with respect to velocity. In fact, I think there's three cartridges that are interesting to compare, and we'll talk about that when I talk about ballistics in just a moment. There's 223 Remington, of course, which is the benchmark standard, the, the standard cartridge by which all others are compared for the AR-15. 
there's the 22 nozzler, and then there's 22 250. So 22 250 is basically almost as big as a 308 Winchester. It has the same case rim as 308 Winchester, 30 out 6, 65 Creedmoor, etc. So it's going to be a short action bolt action gun or an AR 10. It's kind of a rare scenario, but it's going to be in that class of firearm, but its whole goal is to push a 22 caliber projectile to the maximum velocity possible. And I love 22 250. It's great in a bolt gun, but that doesn't help you if you want to have a semi-automatic firearm for varmint hunting or some other application where you need that kind of capability. That is where the AR-15 comes in. Now, what I did was I took the AR-15 rifle from the AR MPR Precision Long Range Rifle build series that I did a long time back, and I put a different upper on it chambered in 22 nozzler. This is one and eight twist. It's got an 18 inch barrel, which is good for handling. If you want the maximum velocity out of 22 nozzler, if you look at the 22 nozzler low data, it's gonna be out of a 24 inch barrel. So I kind of think 22 or 24 would be interesting for maximum velocity. 18 inches is great if you're gonna be running a suppressor or want a more compact kind of form factor. So what about building an AR-15 for 22 nozzler? Let's say you took an existing AR-15 chambered in 223 Remington and you wanted to convert that to 22 nozzler. Well, there's only two things you need to do. The first is do a barrel swap. And the barrel is gonna be chambered in 22 nozzler. On the exterior, it's gonna be the same as your 223 or 556 AR-15 barrel. The second is to swap out your 223 magazine for a 6.8 SPC magazine. Now I have a few of these, the AR Stoner variety, which are available at Midway USA. And on, on the exterior, they're pretty much the same, but you can see in the feed area here, it's a lot wider on the 6.8 SPC magazine, and that's because of the fatter body. So once you get your magazine and you get your barrel and you perform the barrel conversion, you are ready to roll. And I'll tell you, it handles pretty much like a normal AR-15 in terms of recoil. I didn't really notice an appreciable increase in recoil. I didn't shoot it side by side. I swapped uppers, swapped my optic from one upper to the next. So it wasn't, you know, the, the kind of same shooting session kind of a thing, but it's definitely not noticeable in, in a bad way. So that's about all there is to know uh, about the rifle. Let's talk real quick about ballistics. So I did quite a bit of, of research to take a look at those three cartridges I just mentioned. The 223 Remington, the 22 Nosler, and the 22 250. I'm big fans of all three. They all three have their place. If you want maximum velocity out of a 22 caliber cartridge in an AR-15, 22 Nosler is a great option. Let's take a look at the numbers real quick. So what I did was I used a 55 grain projectile as kind of a datum, as kind of you know the canonical example of the weight of bullet that you would shoot from an AR-15. And actually they shoot really great in all three of those cartridges. So with 223, you're gonna be somewhere around 3,200 feet per second. And this is all from the Nosler low data for 223 Remington for 22 Nosler and for 22 250 to try and keep everything kind of equivalent. So 3,200 for 223 Remington, and this is at zero yards right at the muzzle. 3,500 for 22 Nosler, so that's about a 10% increase. And 3,700 for 22 250. So that's about 6% over 22 Nosler and about 16% over, over 223. Of course, that requires a different rifle platform and if you just want the maximum velocity out of 22 period that's a great way to go for the air 15 platform it's interesting to compare the ballistics at longer ranges because the ballistic coefficient on 22 caliber bullets is typically not as good as some of the other bullets like you'd find 65 which has you know gained popularity with 65 creedmoor and other similar chamberings so I'm using a ballistic coefficient, a G1BC of 0.267, which was 
from the shooter app from one of the Nosler 55 grain projectiles as an example for this comparison. What gets really interesting is when things go out to 600 yards. 600 yards is kind of the, the, the distance that I prefer to shoot at to start to stretch the legs of a particular rifle then to go out to, you know, a thousand or beyond. So at 600 yards, 223 is down to 1,378 feet per second. 22 Nosler is up at 1545 and what's interesting about that is it's well above transonic. So you can go beyond 600 yards and still have optimal stability and not have any of those transonic effects taking place. 22 250 is up at 1661 and I'll, I'll put all this ballistic data in the full write-up. You're going to want to check that out as well. So at 600 yards, the 22 Nosler is, is significantly better ballistically uh, compared with the 223 Remington. So if you're short of 600 yards and you're doing something like varmint hunting or target shooting, 223 is a great option. At 600 yards or greater is where 22 Nosler is going to really start to take the lead and to show its benefits. At 1,000 yards, 223 is down to 914. 22 Nosler is down to 961 and 22 250 is down to 995. Again, these are all ballistics from the shooter app. I did some comparisons. Same 55 grain bullet with the 3200, 3500, and 3700 feet per second muzzle velocities at, right at, at the muzzle. So what does that tell you? It tells me that when that bullet is screaming with a lesser ballistic coefficient, a lower ballistic coefficient, it really bleeds off the speed quickly. And that's where having more speed can, can be advantageous. And then once you get down to lower velocities, the bleed off, it's, it's a little bit more equivalent. We're all in the 900s across the board here at, at 1,000 yards. So I would select a different cartridge and a different caliber for a thousand yards and greater. And again, that's where a cartridge like the 6.5 Creedmoor is awesome because the bullet is long, it's got a really great ballistic coefficient, and additionally, the velocities are a little bit lower. They, they can be lower. That means it's less of a barrel burner. So it's all a game of trade-offs. And I think 22 Nosler is, is a great set of trade-offs and a great set of capabilities for that intermediate long range, 600 to 800 yards type of distance applications. Varmint hunting, target shooting, I used it in the PRS match and it did great. So it's, it's a great cartridge that has a lot of great potential. And what we're gonna transition to, I'll cover it briefly in this video, we'll get more in depth in future videos, is reloading for it. Because of course, every rifle is different, every shooting application is different, Different bullets can do different things, and really you're gonna to wanna to reload if you're really gonna get into 22 Nosler. So let's take a look at some of the components here and equipment. So I have the 22 Nosler SB slash TC die set from RCBS, that's number 29707. And those are the dies that I'm gonna demonstrate in the video. I wanted to make a quick mention. Ellie Wilson now has a Nosler approved case gauge for the 22 Nosler. Super, super important. I didn't have this for the PRS match because it wasn't available yet. So I had to use the chamber of the rifle to double check that uh, my sizing was, was good and all that. For the match, I used RDF bullets, the 70 green. These are the reduced drag factor bullets from, from Nosler. And they did really, really awesome. They held up really well with their velocity, the ballistic coefficient, much better compared to the 55 grain projectiles that I was talking about a moment ago. And they got me on target, and the heavier bullets are, are definitely good at longer ranges. So, brass. Nosler makes 22 Nosler Blast currently. I'm not aware of any other sources. Nosler brass is premium brass. It's ready to load. It's extremely consistent. I weighed a few of these cases when I was doing my initial loads and was surprised to see 
like less than a grain variance between the handful of cases that I weighed, which is just absolutely amazing. And that tells you something about the uniformity and consistency. And that consistency will translate to consistent velocities, which means precision, small group sizes, which, which is great. There's a whole bunch of, of powders that are listed in the Nosler, 22 Nosler load data. And that load data is sorted by powder, but they also indicate which powder gave them the best accuracy results, which is, is really nice. And in fact, within each group, even the powders that didn't perform as well, they'll list the, the, the load for that particular powder that was best within that particular powder category. So that's definitely really nice. And they've got all the cartridge you know, specifications and information about the test conditions and test barrel also included in that data. So I would highly recommend that you take a look at that if you're considering 22 Nosler and, and a reloading setup. So hopefully that gives you an idea of why 22 Nosler exists, what you need to do to take advantage of 22 Nosler, and we'll be getting into reloading with 22 Nosler and measure our performance. That's always a good thing and a fun thing, and I hope you'll stick around for the series. And if you have 22 Nosler experience, please drop a comment on the video, check out the full write-up, maybe throw a comment over there too, because I'd love to hear your experiences, this is still totally new. It's new this year. It was announced at, uh, and launched at the SHOT Show in 2017. So it's definitely hot off the press and I'm still experimenting and having a lot of fun with this, with this cartridge and want for you all to be a part of that. So make sure you're subscribed to my channel and if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading.